All right. Uh, very good. good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. <laughs> I'm Alan So, uh, one of the executive from Escalite, and also hosting this particular webinar on open network learning. And we are very happy this uh, today to have uh, presenters. Uh, we have Lars Ullins, uh, who is an educational developer at the Lin Shopping uh, University, as well as uh, York. Paragis, who is the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Carlstadt University, and also a assistant professor in the Business Administration and Researcher at the CTF Service Research Center. And we also have uh, Kay Odon, uh, who is from the uh, QUT, who is with us this uh, today. So without further ado, I'll pass the time to uh, Lars and York. Yeah, you see here. Can I just look at my settings? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, look at your settings. I uh, say hi and uh, welcome, everyone. And thanks for having us, Ellen. And thanks for joining us for the webinar, Deborah, Tracy, Victoria, and everyone who is watching the recording. So, um, yeah, real pleasure to uh, be with you and introduce a course we are uh, working on and Lars has uh, <laughs> invented uh, together with a former colleague uh, years ago and uh, we call it now a course a community and approach because it's much more than a, a course we think and you will learn all about it and we hope to um, get some input from you and discuss about this uh, for those of you who are here if I understand this correctly you can chat um, to ask questions, we will keep an eye out on the chat room. So if you have a question, then just let us know and um, we hope to make this as interactive as possible. Yeah. Okay, um, so good to see you. Uh, but Alan, how many are we in here? Um, is it possible to, to also share uh, microphone rights to everyone if we're not so many? I think uh, I can do it if that's okay with you guys. I can. We can make everyone a moderator or presenter. Lars, shall I? Where did Alan go? Oh, uh, Alan is uh, in the background, I think, and fixing it at the moment. He is making everyone presenters. Yeah, okay, we all collaborate in learning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, what Jörg and I thought of kind of the webinar outline, uh, not really knowing how many there will be in the webinar, but uh, just looking through some uh, some common notions on online learning, and, and I think we're, we're within the kind of framework or context that we, that we work with this Open Network Learning course within. Uh, as a part of, of um, trying to uh, work with educational development in, in different ways. So just going through the Open Network Learning course, a little collaboration organization and the team, uh, but the design, uh, look a little about the activities and, um, and also show the homepage. Uh, uh, with the activities and, and what it looks like. And then something about the PPL groups as we work with problem-based learning. And then uh, let participant voices come come forward and, and experiences. Uh, and we have Kay here, so we may might put you in a... Uh, and then some thoughts about looking ahead. So for interaction, if possible then, having microphones and you can just raise your hand i think that would be even the best way to to interact and if you if you want you can also see the uh, user chat all the time exactly uh, so tracy again and kick out of the space <laughs> yeah i think yeah she borrowed an office space i think so um she's really okay big. okay the office space yeah. <laughs> it's not the blackboard space huh? No. Oh, no, I don't think so. Um, yeah. So, 
we thought like before we go ahead and talk about ourselves and how the course we we would like to know a little bit uh, about yourself and uh, Deborah and Victoria and once Tracy is back as well like what's your experiences with um, online learning and did you did you this did you I guess you participated in courses but do you teach in courses as well do you design online courses if you um, if you were so brave to share a little bit about your experience that would be awesome so we can maybe adapt our presentation a little bit more towards what is relevant to you and what you have um, in mind and what challenges if if so what challenges did you face if you want to raise your hand or write something in the chat as yeah Deborah, go ahead okay um, I read, yeah, it, can we give Deborah the word, uh, the mic, or can you just speak? Yeah. Um, I actually started in the online space many years ago as a student, uh, which was really interesting because it was in its, its early days, if you like. Um, yeah. And then I have taught online. Um, I'm not an educational designer. I'm actually an academic. But uh, I was responsible with one of my other colleagues uh, a couple of years ago for designing an online uh, Juris Doctor, which is a master's level course, which um, we were fairly innovative with um, and uh, worked it around problem-based learning, collaboration and so on. So yeah. I'm going to be really interested to hear what you've been doing. Um, yeah, because excellent. we just went into it cold and thought some thoughts and it seems to be working very well although I'm no longer at that institution. Oh, okay, well, excellent. That, that's, uh, then we're really much on the same page here, I guess. And, and I didn't, I missed the content. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what subject area was this in, this course? Uh, law. Law, in law, law. okay, law. fantastic. Yes. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Um, thank you so much uh, and for sharing this, Deborah. And uh, Victoria, I read here from the chat, says that she's an educational designer at Lincoln University in New Zealand, and they are moving more and more on towards online and experience a lot of challenges. Uh, Victoria, do you want to say something about the challenges? Um, sure. Just because we're working towards that, we have everything from the classical lecture 50 minutes to um, yeah, people who really want to put everything online with our masters and postgrad programs. So it's just trying to get everybody onto the same page. And quite often, because we are small, um, we only have about 2,500 students. We're in a very we're outside of Christchurch, New Zealand. We're a very small town, and um, quite often groups will go, "Well, you just put things online, right?" And that's online learning, right? So there's yep. a lot of challenges that we're trying to work with so that it works well. So it's good for the students as well for the lecturers. Yeah, yeah. and excellent. And um, so do, do you have some, like what what's like infrastructure do you have in place? You have a learning management platform or LMS or VLE, how do you call it? Yes, right now we're using Moodle and we call it yep. Learn. So that's our only LMS system that we have right now and we're, this is the problem. We're all kind of departmentalized, and what we see as useful tools, sometimes our IT department does not. <laughs> so when we would prefer yeah. to use Zoom, um, they like Skype for business, which uh, falls apart for us on a repeated basis. So yeah, it's trying to get everybody kind of on the same page and to move forward. Yeah. And besides the lecturers and us and IT, and yeah, what does yeah. the library do if somebody decides they want a book and they're not locally in Lincoln, how do they get that? And what if they don't return it? And I mean, there's so many things that aren't thought about yet that we keep trying to say, okay, great, we want to do this, but how to make sure it supports students, support lecturers, and it doesn't fall in bits. No. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, Victoria. This is, uh, it really feels it doesn't matter where we are on this planet, uh, we all have the same struggles, uh, whether it be in, in Karlstad University in Sweden or in New Zealand or 
Um, yeah, sounds very familiar. Um, wouldn't you say, alas? Yeah, I think we can all recognize what you what you're saying. I mean, it's the same. Uh, it's the same everywhere. I think, and it's it's, it's a lo- quite a long way to go. It feels sometimes, uh, and um, that's why so- it's good. And uh, collaborate and share and uh, share our struggles and uh, come up maybe with the joint solutions which you can go around uh, designing some stuff in ways you maybe haven't thought about and uh, hopefully we can give you some input in this uh, today. Was there anything in particular, Victoria, you had in mind uh, for, for what you would like to get out of this webinar? No, I was just really curious to see what you were doing so that any bits that looked like I might be able to take to my team and say, here we go, let's give this a go. Um, that will help us progress in our journey to going to more online. Excellent. Then then let's go ahead. Yeah, Last. okay. Just first some 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 uh, thoughts on, on, on learning and, and I mean, what we are struggling against, uh, a lot of common notions on, on what this is. As you said, Victoria, I mean, it's just putting content online and then you're online. Uh, so, I mean, one thing is that I think we can see is that uh, the notion of, of it's that online learning is, is more technology than pedagogy. And, and that's really something that we struggle with uh, to, to implement this in universities, that, that it's, everyone tends to focus on, on, on the digital tools instead of, of turning it around and thinking in a pedagogical way and how to use uh, technology. So, I mean, technology doesn't help learning if it's not used in, 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 a, in a good way. Uh, one notion is also that it re- requires less time and money. So some institutions start to digitalize uh, just for that reason to save money, but that's not true. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it's, uh, it's the money, well, uh, money and time is spent in another way, uh, but it requires both for teachers and for, for learners, it doesn't require less time uh, if, if it's done pedagogically uh, in a good way. Uh, it's also this about self. Uh, that online learning is self-studies uh, without interactivity and that might have been so earlier because uh, but with, with the development of technology with the possibilities like meeting like this in the webinar and using e-meeting tools and so, such uh, this is something that we really have been trying out in in the open network learning course that it's not self-studies uh, we have a lot of these MOOCs that have come up uh, during the past years which uh, mostly focus on quite a lot of self-studies and not much interactivity. Uh, it's also one notion, I mean, we, me having quite a long, a long background, 20, 30 years with problem-based learning and uh, working in a physical environment uh, and uh, the notion that uh, collaborative learning works best in a physical environment. You need to sit face to face uh, and I don't think that's true either. Uh, you you need to use it, use both kind of um, uh, environments in a, in a in a good way and also integrate them. Uh, so I think we can really create good collaborative learning also in an online environment. Uh, and it's also the notion that students entering higher education have a high level of digital literacy. Uh, and this is something that we also highlight in the Open Network Learning course with David White's thoughts on on, on uh, really challenging the, the natives and, and immigrants' uh, uh, way of thinking and, and instead thinking about it in, in that we are, are visitors and residents in, in an online environment. And, and it's not uh, transferable into using uh, digital literacy in a kind of more personal environment into professional learning and, and work life. Uh, so just putting this in a larger context, I think what we are trying to do here is, is kind of international international education and competency development and uh, using the virtual mobility possibilities uh, and uh, to see that collaborative work learning in international teams which I think is needed now when we're also talking a lot more about the, the globalization and the uh, sustainable 
sustainability, uh, sustainable development in, worldwide, uh, we need to collaborate across borders. Uh, and it's also about creating pro in that creating professional community and network. So I think this is kind of the umbrella of, of what we are trying to, to do with this, uh, moving it out from, from the lock spaces in the universities and, and move it out there as an arena. Uh, so, coming and talking a little bit more about the Open Network Learning course, and see now you cannot see the whole screen there, but Open Network Learning, uh, o ONL, is what we call the course. And we uh, talk about it as uh, a course, community, uh, and an approach. It's, so it's not only a course, it's creating something more. And we have an organizing team, which is Jörg and me. Uh, and we have also Alistair Kreelman from Linnaeus University and Maria Kvarnström and Lotte Orbjörnsson. And uh, so we, we started this journey in uh, 2013, actually, and been running the course since. So um, a few words about the course in general. Uh, it's a lot of collaboration across borders. Uh, it's really run by education developers at different, different institutions uh, doing the course, but it's also collaboration across borders for all learners and, and uh, everyone who participates in, in the course. So it's an open online, uh, collaborative learning in small groups with the uh, support of uh, facilitators. Uh, so it's very much learning by doing. Uh, so we quite often say that doing the course and, and experiencing the course is the course. So it's about uh, learning in online environments, doing online learning uh, in an on online environment and experiencing that. Uh, so with uh, some of us in, in the team who have long experience of problem-based learning, so we try to see how can we uh, uh, work with problem-based learning in a digital environment and fully online. So what we are creating a, a kind of a multicultural and interdisciplinary arena for competency development, and uh, which gives a lot of opportunities for exchange of experiences in, in online and digital learning. So I think this is what most people and, and institutions joining the course have been using it for, uh, to get, uh, get an, a network and, and uh, to exchange and learn together. And I saw that, Kay, you said, it, you said that before, that we all learn together and, and co-create together. <clears throat> So it approaches mostly teachers, uh, information technology, educators, uh, education developers. That's the main uh, target group, I think. <clears throat> but anyone really is, is, uh, can, can join the course. So uh, we have moved out from the learning management system in, in the university and have a kind of self-built learning experiences platform, which uh, Jörg can show you a little bit more about uh, later. So this is to show the whole, from an organizational perspective, the, the ONL community. And, and this course, ONL 19.2, that's the second iteration of, of this year. Uh, uh, and uh, to, to what that looks like, you can see all the collaborating institutions. Uh, there are seven in Sweden. We have two from Finland, one in Germany, Switzerland, and then we have Singapore, where Alan comes from, and then we have two in uh, South Africa. Uh, and then we also have uh, quite a large group of open learners. Anyone in the world who wants to join the course and interested to, to join a PBL group here uh, or just join the course uh, participating partly, uh, are welcome. Uh, 
to do that. So based on all these institutions uh, that, so you can say that all these institutions use this open network learning course for competence development of teachers at their own universities. So certificates are, are issued from each of the universities. Uh, and uh, so from each university, we have about six participants. Uh, and for each six participants, uh, they also bring in a facilitator uh, for a PBL group. And then all learners from all institutions are mixed in PBL groups. So at this iteration, we have 15 PBL groups with uh, about seven to eight participants in each PBL group. I can use the arrow maybe. I'm not used to see here. Yeah, maybe. Does it work? No. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so for each PBL group, there are, you can see that there are, that's uh, the circus with this as eight. That's the PBL group, and for each PBL group, there is a facilitator. Uh, the square, uh, and then you have a, a co-facilitator also. So now we are moving around here, I think. Now, I think uh, as everyone is presenters, maybe people test, click on some errors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is kind of show the, the, the organization of the course. And, and uh, so the main, the main part of the course is really for learners to work in a PBL group a facilitated PBL group with a facilitator and a co-facilitator uh, who is uh, a former participant of the course. So something about uh, the ONL team, Jörg. Yeah, um, uh, I was just uh, about to ask Meredith where she's uh, located. But um, uh, the ONL team, yeah, so like as Lars introduced, um, we are the co-organizing team, um, which you see on the top left corner. Then we have, um, and from all the partner universities, we have one institutional um, teachers, um, one like a contact person from each institution. So we have, what did we say, last 15 partner universities at the moment? Yeah. Um, um, globally, um, which is very fascinating and fantastic. Ah, University of Melbourne. Thank you, Meredith. Um, then um, we have for each um, PBL group a facilitator, and which is formally responsible for a PBL problem-based learning group, um, which is the teacher, but um, but more um, um, but more facilitator, of course. And and um, Lars uses this uh, nice. Um, metaphor of uh, being uh, uh, sitting together in the car, but you will maybe get to this metaphor later, Lars. Um, mm. And uh, as um, uh, each group um, has also a co-facilitator and supports the PBL group more in an in informal uh, way and makes sure everyone is um, in line and we're just helping the groups uh, moving on in the uh, process which is a little bit um which is often new to a lot of the participants in the beginning so we we make sure that um, everyone gets access so we do a lot of um um yeah technical support but also making sure the groups have a group contract and um uh, facilitate the learning and especially the in, in the initial phases of the course and group formation was there anything else we wanted to say about the team as such? We do meet with all facilitators and co-facilitators every other week during the course just to update ourselves what's happening and how, how the process is in each of, um, PBL group. Sometimes um, uh, we make some changes in the team and the, this, this is the entire team, yeah? You see a lot of uh, faces from all around the world um, from 
San Diego uh, in California to uh, Singapore. Ellen, how often have you been participating in the course? Plenty of times, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. you might no, the and it usually, as the last said, they started as an open learner um, and then uh, started as a maybe co-facilitator and then as a, f a facilitator and then joined then with their university as a partner university. This was the case for me. I started back in 2013 a as an open learner. Um, stayed all around in the community, uh, lurked around in some courses, but always kept in touch and was very intrigued um, by the course uh, we're running. And I was at the same time developing courses, similar courses uh, at my own university. And uh, so last year and last 18 um, in the autumn term 2018, I uh, was a co-facilitator now. No, a facilitator now. I'm the course part of the course organizing team. Um, yeah, so this is the team, great team of international. Yeah. So, Jörg, I was thinking, uh, Kay, you said you could only be half an hour. Yeah. Uh, before we proceed, um, any any words from you? I mean, you've been hanging around or, or being <laughs> with us and and participating in different ways for quite some time. Yeah, thank you. I do, I do have to jet off soon, so thank you. Um, I started in 2016 as a participant, an open um, learner participant that um, was, and then I was a co-facilitator for two iterations. Um, and now I have the last few iterations, three, I think, or maybe four. I have worked with Alistair Quillman in the uh, second um, topic on open learning and sharing, and we've led that topic um, because the course is separated into different focus areas. And so I've had I've had so many amazing learning experiences in all of the different roles, and I think it's so rewarding to. Um, there's people that I am in touch with now online, on Twitter and through networks that I would never have met in any other way, but we have conversations and, um, and great um, learning experiences even outside of the course now. So it's been a really great experience. Thanks a lot, Kay. And I mean, that's, I think that's, you, you're an example of, of of, of uh, <laughs> the community building and, and the networking that I mean, just being there and it's growing. Uh, so it's fantastic absolutely. To, yeah. No worries. Thank you for allowing me to share my um, experiences because it's just I just want to keep sharing with everyone. Say you should join. You should do this. It's <laughs> such a great learning experience, and you make great connections and you learn about other cultures and. Other, it also brings down the silos between different faculties and different learning areas because there's I've had I've worked and learnt with um, people who are in um, Swedish literature or medicine or physiotherapy or all sorts of different fields and areas that I normally wouldn't have the opportunity to connect with. So it has been really great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks okay. a lot, Kay. So, uh, yeah, uh, so briefly about the ONL topics and, and outline. Uh, for this iteration now, we, we, it's been running for, it's running for, for ten, week, 10 weeks. <clears throat> uh, having a getting started week, uh, which is mainly for individual participants to start connect with the whole community, uh, starting to familiarize with uh, the learning environment, uh, starting up some uh, a blog page uh, for themselves and, and, and so on. Uh, and then bringing on to uh, the next week, connecting week, which is where all the PBL groups uh, start to meet and, and, and form. Uh, so the connecting week is very much uh, focused on getting to know each other in, in the smaller PBL groups. 
And then we have uh, four main topics uh, uh, that are all two weeks, online participation and digital literacies. Uh, it's open learning and sh sharing and openness. We have learning in communities and then design for online and blended learning. So all these topics are for two weeks and we look into them a little bit more uh, what, what it means with, to work with in the PBL group. And then ending off with uh, uh, a last week lessons learned that when individuals uh, and uh, PBL groups reflect on the learning and uh, uh, also what to bring with them into their own practice. For this iteration, we also added a reflection week in the middle of the course. Uh, we have seen that it's, it's needed to, to stop somewhere. It's quite hectic uh, and most participants have uh, full-time work at the side of, of, of the course. So, so this is the first time we've done that. And the, just the past week has been that reflect, reflection week. So it would be interesting to see uh, how that affects the course. So looking at it in a more timeline, you can see these 12 weeks uh, and be, having getting started week, uh, you see all the topics. Uh, so in the in the learning environment, there is a, a, an ONL 192 community space, which is uh, the space for for um, discussing and sharing ideas for the whole community. And for this this situation, we were when when started, we were about 120 participants and 30 facilitators. So that adds up to about 150 people. Uh, so that's kind of for the whole 12 weeks. And then from the connecting week, you can see the PBL groups start working and work throughout the course together. Uh, and, um, and then also participants have their own uh, learning blogs, uh, really starting from writing a, a reflective blog post from topic one. So these are the main different parts of the, of the learning learning process that you have the community space, the PBL groups and the learning blogs. At the bottom, you can see uh, um, common course uh, activities. Uh, as we have institutions adding, most institutions have campus meetings uh, just prior to the uh, when the course starts. Uh, we usually have a drop drop in help desk during the first week and then during the course for each topic we have uh, webinars and tweet chats uh, with invited guests or if people also in the, in the ONL team run webinars so maybe just go into and show the uh, the home page a little Jörg yeah but maybe we can just quickly uh, touch base with uh, Deborah uh, Meredith. Victoria, does that uh, make any sense so far? Can you follow us? Do you have any questions before we proceed? Yeah, go ahead, Deborah. Uh, it's certainly making sense, and um, I'm really interested in in what you're saying. A lot of it fits with, I think, what we almost intuitively know without necessarily having put it all into practice. So I'm in a new position responsible for raising the, <clears throat> the quality of our teaching staff. Um, and something like this is, is really something I'd want to be looking at, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Deborah. Um, and uh, yeah, and we do have, like, each partner university usually has one um, session uh, where we have a campus meetup. Um, but that's, um, um, yeah, that's like a two hour session. We also uh, meet each other. We use Zoom for our uh, online meetings, like what we're using now here on Blackboard for this webinar. We use Zoom. Um, and then we check with a uh, quickly wave to all the other groups to see there's a lot of people out there in a similar situation. Maybe can uh, Vike, who is a current participant of the current course, can 
remember how this was and share this in a little bit uh, in a little while. Um, so, and I don't know if we were clear about this. Uh, this course is running right now at the moment, and we are in the um, um, reflective uh, reflection week in the lower left hand side. Um, and um, so we come halfway uh, through the course at the moment. Yeah. Just a few words <laughs> also on the. Sorry. Or like what, what you you were referring to face to face in in a in a in a away from keyboard situation, or I see the narrative is typing as well. Yeah, no problems at all, Meredith. Uh, we all. Uh, Every, always coming something up and no problems at all. You can watch the recording afterwards, but um, um, yeah. So then, then I can show you maybe how this um, uh, this learning platform, or Lars? Yeah, D just, just briefly on this, because I mean, you're, as you can see, this, this course is for teachers, education developers, uh, uh, about online learning but i think the whole design as you see these topics i mean they could easily you could easily take the the online design of the course and change the topics to anything so it could be adapted to any kind of discipline uh, and so on but looking at it as an educational development course for teachers it, when it comes to online learning we can also see that these topics also follow the learning process you also you start with thinking about online participation and then you need to think about what's my position about being open and then having reflection and then in the middle of the course with learning communities PBL groups start to think about how do we collaborate so and then thinking about design for online learning thinking ahead for your practice so it kind of the topic is also designed to follow the learning process that we have seen uh, in the course uh, i just briefly wanted to add that so i think you're just show the yeah. home page a little i do i'll show you our self-built learning or well, how did you call it so neatly uh, our digital learning, learning experience <laughs> platform <laughs> Say it again. Learning experience platform. Learning experience platform. That was excellent. I'll show you our learning experience platform. It's in the bottom of it, basically a WordPress page. And it's a WordPress multi-site to be technically correct, um, uh, which is hosted on the Karlstadt University servers and um, just downloaded and installed the uh, WordPress multi-site, uh, which is every, uh, it takes an IT department five minutes to do this and doesn't cost you anything. WordPress, as you probably know, is an open source software, um, which, um, yeah, you can just download and install on your server. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, Thirty percent of all web pages on the internet currently run on WordPress. So if you know WordPress, you are um, pretty uh, well adapted uh, for being a collaborator and producer in on the in the digital uh, time. So this is the course course homepage, and as I said, we are in right in the middle of it. So if you scroll down a little bit, you see the latest course news. Um, announcing that we're now in the reflection week here just some um, uh, some <laughs> broad uh, uh, explanations what this course is about and uh, how it works and with some additional links to how we you can particip participate in several ways and if you uh, want to um, uh, keep updated about new course iterations then you may, might uh, want to uh, sign up here and subscribe to the blog uh, with your email address. Um, so then uh, here in the top menu, we just uh, have a little bit of, that's kind of a syllabus for the course, uh, about the course with its the team and um, how you can participate and uh, what tools we use and what kind of pedagogical design we uh, have in this course and um, some presentations we did uh, in the in the past. Uh, I'm on vacation in Germany at the moment. I have my uh, daughter with me here, so uh, 
Do you want to say hi to everyone in German or in Swedish? No? Um, so um, uh, uh, next to it, we have the course overview. I show you just quickly. It's basically what you've seen on the slides, the different topics, quick um, um, introduction about live events, maybe which we have in each topic. For instance, in the Getting Started weekend, we had a ONL help desk where people just could drop in where we were sitting for an hour or two each day and asking questions for participants. And then for each topic, we have uh, one or two live events. We do a webinar um, usually and a tweet chat. I don't know if you ever participated in a tweet chat. Very exciting. Uh, here you can register um, and soon also you can register for the next um, iteration. What we did, I don't know if um, um, Lars uh, mentioned this, uh, we, we ask each participant to write a, a reflective blog post about their experiences, about their learnings from each topic and just to introduce themselves as well. And participants have the possibility to connect their blog to the course homepage here. If they just write down which blog, what the URL to their blog is. And what we do then, um, I, uh, we um, connect all the blog posts and aggregate all the blog posts automatically afterwards then to the course homepage. And this is all done in the open. We're very clear about this. The participants can decide for themselves if they are going uh, open with their blogging or if they do private blogs, they don't need to have to share uh, openly if they don't want to. This is a decision by the participants. Uh, all the blog posts you see here, uh, participants decided to uh, blog openly and connect their blog to their course homepage. So what we what you see here is blog posts from individual participants. Um, you see the different names uh, and the uh, pictures and uh, what happens here if you click on one? Here we um, I choose Stefan's um, blog post. You would then um, come to Stefan's blog and uh, write about his experiences, reflections. And what we try to achieve with this is that A, uh, self reflect on the learning and uh, have a diary about the learning and reflect to the um, relate to the course um, literature and the literature what the participants sell, um, uh, found themselves. But as you know, it's a blog. Um, you can also comment uh, on each blog. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here, this is a relatively new blog and not, no one has uh, commented, but we want to have this con connecting um, and networking with each other also in form of connecting and commenting on each other's blog posts. So this is one central part, and this is a central part of the open uh, part of the course. The next part um, is um, the community space. Um, and this now, area, so, so far what you've seen is all out, out there in the open, and you can uh, search and go to the course on uh, by yourself and look around and connect also as an open participant to other participants by also connecting your blog, for instance, or just commenting and reading what other people said and um, reflected upon. Now I'm moving over to the um, kind of a closed space. Um, we, for, the, for the entire community of each course iteration, we uh, created another WordPress site, which uh, seems like um, it's, it's on the same page. It is on the same page, but technically uh, it's another um, WordPress site. And this is the community space for the entire uh, community. All PBL groups have access to this, all facilitators. And it's um, as we in the course previously used Google uh, Plus, and you might be aware of um, that the Google Plus is not existing for um, uh, private users. Um, but everyone was so happy with it, and the facilitators and the course organizers also missed the, the Google Plus uh, experience. We uh, recreated uh, the Google Plus experience in WordPress. We are working with a, um, a, a WordPress wizard, we call him, and he's known as Tom Woodward at the VCU, Virginia, uh, um, Virginia Commonwealth University in, uh, in the United States. Um, 
uh, he rebuilt this for us. And uh, here you participants can uh, discuss, and it's a more, um, it's a discussion board if you want to, a forum for everyone to share. And um, then on the left hand side, you see links to a PBL group space. Each PBL group has the similar space to which only the PBL group has access to. And um, I show you the PBL group of my PBL group, which I'm facilitating. Here, each group, um, each like a tiny PBL group, has its own space as well. Same look and feel, uh, a place to share. Here, we have um, some other links, what we do as well in the course. And uh, we uh, we provide uh, we set up a, a Google Drive environment for everyone to collaborate uh, collaborative writing on the different topics, and we have uh, this also integrated in this WordPress page. So if you click here on on a topic, um, uh, you get to um, and I don't know if you see this still, you get then immediately to the um, to the Google Drive folder. And here's the link to the Zoom room for the PBL group meetings. Each PBL group meets uh, three to four times um, each um, in a two-week topic, so one to two times each week. And um, yeah, and this is kind of the uh, environment. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I, uh, now I see there's some um, chats in the. How are you using Padlet? Yeah, um, yeah, it's um, Padlet. We use all in a, a very different tools in each PBL group to um, uh, share their work. Uses different tools. Some use Padlet. Some use video. Some use uh, um, PowerPoint presentation or Prezi's. Um, it's uh, all very different and part of the learning to get exposed and try out new tools uh, for learning. Yeah, is this maybe giving you an idea? This is what we kind of built ourselves as a, the a learning experience platform. Um, it doesn't cost us anything. And um, yeah, we share this as well, the design. And um, you can uh, really do this on your own. Uh, we had the same, oh, like we were happy uh, or uh, uh, fortunately, uh, fortunate that we don't have a struggle with our IT department. They're very um, easy uh, to work with and they set up this WordPress multi-site easily for us. It's not a problem. It shouldn't be a problem really for all I, any IT department. Uh, I know some universities outsource this and just go to a um, web posting um, company for themselves and uh, host it there. Um, I recommend to do it through your own institution, but uh, there's other providers who will help you with this, of course, if you wanted to. Yes, I don't know if you have any questions about the platform or if, we, um, if, was this, if this was clear at all. Um, it really um, helps people finding their ways. Earlier, we were on three different places, uh, wordpress.com, uh, WordPress site and in the Google Drive and then uh, in the Google Plus that left a lot of people feeling very um, yeah um, confused and separated now we have it all integrated in one place which works very well we haven't heard much that we have an overload of tools or frustration from the participants, but uh, maybe we should um, now talking about participants. Um, invite you some participate, or what do you say? Should we have a look into kind of uh, the learning activities for the PPL group? Uh, yeah, we we could, um, but uh, we only have ten minutes left. I think I think we said it. This is would last an hour or. Yeah, so we have 10 minutes left, and, and Wiebke made all her we, way. Yeah, if we go back to the presentation, or what do you think? Yeah, I stopped sharing here. <clears throat> Did I stop sharing now? Yeah. Excellent. This worked very nice with... Uh... We have Wiebke with us, or... Yeah, I think. Vipke is with us. Yes, hi. Yes. 
The side is just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you see me? I don't know. I cannot see myself. No, I think you have to activate your video. Uh, yeah, I did, the... but it oh. somehow doesn't really um, do the video thing. No. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're just hear me. Voice. Say yeah. what? We do hear your lovely voice. <laughs> Good. Okay, then I'll just speak and you will not see me. Um, yes, you had invited me, Jörg, to participate in this meeting today um, as a participant of the ONL course that is running right now, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Could say, I what, if you just could share some like of your experience as a participant of this ongoing course right now, if you still mm -hmm. remember how it was in the first meeting when we met on campus and what your experience been so far. Mm, okay. So I think it was really nice that the course started with a face-to-face -face meeting on campus. We were all very confused and a little bit overwhelmed by being exposed to a completely different way of thinking, uh, taking a course, because this course is really designed in a very novelist way and uh, has several layers of where and what kind of assignments take place and so on. And this is exciting, but it's also a bit overwhelming as a participant. So it was good that we had this face-to-face -face meeting to just simply share this little moment of panic. And then I think uh, it just, I think, clarified itself really quickly in the first week already when we had uh, the PBL uh, meetings and uh, the tutors that sort of explain things to uh, us once more. So I thought I think this was uh, good to have this face-to-face -face meeting and um, the course in itself is really continuing to be really interesting and exciting because every two, three weeks we have a new topic and um, I think it works well with the combination of webinars, tweet chat, PBL meetings and uh, block writing. So I'm I'm pretty happy as a participant in this course so far. Excellent. Mm. That's great to hear. But yeah, uh, is there any <laughs> you experience right now at the moment or um... uh, any challenge you just asked me? Yeah. Uh, challenge. What I find a little bit challenging is at the end of each topic, we're giving a presentation and we prepare this presentation in the group. And in my group, there's, I don't know how it works in other groups, there's a little bit uh, sort of a performance pressure that builds up after already, I don't know, the first week in a new topic where we are like, oh my God, which, uh, which interface, which um, like platform will be used for our presentation and what information should go into it. So I think this uh, this assignment in the end of each topic is a little bit of blocking towards the discussion within the PBR group because then we think about the presentation rather than actually engaging in, in a discussion on, for instance, a particular aspect of a webinar or something like that. So that's something I find is a little bit of a downside. <clears throat> Another downside is that my PBR group consists of um, people who work in the same field and I'm the only one who's a lecturer. The other ones are more technical or library stuff, which makes the discussion for me a little bit limited in the scope because they have very different interests in uh, considering openness because they are more the facilitators of an open course rather than the creator of an open course. Because me as a teacher, I'm planning to prepare my own open course. So I have other problems in this than they have. Hmm. And, okay, and so, so you you you, uh, you ended up in a group uh, where, where diversity is not as as great as it maybe could have been. Mm. Yeah, I guess this just sometimes happens. But this is this is only yeah. a small minus in in the larger frame of the course, which I think is really interesting and. It's not only interesting to take this course, it's also interesting to see it as a template for my own possible courses that I want to design. Excellent. That's that's fantastic to hear. And you know mm -hmm. um, that uh, I would uh, support you in doing this. And this is, uh, I guess, what the last was also saying. This is this would be the this would be the prime outcome for us if this was the case that you as a teacher go out and do a similar thing in your topic area uh, subject area that would be grand and um, yeah mm -hmm. we keep our fingers crossed that this will happen mm. 
Jörg, maybe we should just show the slide learning activities during two week topic because it brings in both of what what, uh, what, the, um, what what has been said and also questions yeah. and what Vibeke said. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. Uh, wait, I'm trying to. I can't find it. Uh, Alan, can you put up the presentation again? I, I, I'm, I'm right yes. on it. Yeah. Um, I'm almost there. So, this one. Yeah. Uh, here, I mean, so th this is what it looks like when it comes to. to to uh, the learning activities during a two-week topic. I mean, you have the, uh, the O'Neill community space, individual studies, and so on with, with blogging. But the PBL group space, discussion and collaborative documents, I mean, that's the core of the course. Uh, and as you see here, each topic starts with a, with a topic introduction, a, a new page on the homepage that, where they, each group have, finds a scenario. Uh, then there are PBL group meetings as well as writing in collaborative documents. And what Vibeke said, you can see the, the, the blue arrow sharing a presentation in the ONL community. And I think we're quite aware of this, that I mean, this can take over uh, in, within a group that, that it becomes focused just to produce a presentation rather than reflecting on and bringing up something. And I think this is something that the, that process becomes a bit different in each PBL group, but also is a discussion within each PBL group how to level that in relation to the whole the whole uh, work with, within the PBL group. And then the individual reflection in a learning blog with uh, also peer comments and feedback on, on, on these. So um, uh, I think just to show you uh, the fish model that we created, Chris in Aransi and I started started this in 2012. Uh, thought of PBL, you know, PBL, the many steps. It's not applicable into to this online environment. So we created this model, three step model kind of uh, focus, investigate, and share. Uh, and uh, there are Google documents for PBL groups to to. Uh, to write for the, all these uh, different steps in. So this just briefly, and, and I think we are almost up with time, and, and I think to leave the rest of, of the time, maybe to quit the presentation, uh, and maybe just finalize with, with, with um, uh, one quote that, uh, that captures a lot of what uh, this is a participant from the last iteration uh, and you can read it through yourselves i think it captures a lot of of uh, uh, the different dimensions of the course and the different levels of, of learning uh, that uh, uh, the course can help with yes so maybe just get back to to uh, video mode where we can see each other and uh, see if there are any questions. I mean, we can we can stay on also for for more informal discussion and and so on. Uh, if Alan wants to kind of formally finalize the webinar. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Lars and uh, York, as well as Ruby and uh, Kay for sharing. I think this is really an insightful session for everyone here. And I think uh, we can continue the discussion. But before that, I uh, just want to thank uh, everyone here for your participation. Uh, I will end the recording and then we can proceed with the informal discussion here. Just give me a minute.